So, the iPhone 12 has been released. And we just spoke about this yesterday. Knew it was gonna come out today. And I specifically said that if you have a iPhone 11, don't upgrade. This, the change is not gonna be that significant. I was right about not upgrading, but the change was significant. So this video is just, just my first impressions about it, where I see it in my personal view for someone or myself or whoever, how does it work and fit in? First things I wanna talk about are the top three things that caught my attention. First of all, 10 bit color. To the average person, no big deal. This is iPhone 12, I'm talking about the 12 Pro. 12 Pro Max and the 12 Pro. Um, 10 bit color. Color is something that we compressed all the time when we do videos. We have to give videos to Instagram, we have to give videos to YouTube, we have to give videos to TikTok nowadays. So color is always being compressed and so we're always trying to preserve color because color is what makes the image most times. Some, some, some images are black and white, but I would say 99% of the videos we see outside today on television, 97% in the high 90s are color. And so the more color you have to work with, the better the results in, in essence when you put it online. Because when we put things online, we compress them. Anyway, so 10-bit color gives as me as a professional a lot of headroom to make adjustments, a lot of headroom to make corrections, a lot of headroom to um, play with the video to get the specific look that I want. Now, oftentimes we shoot a video that looks flat like this. And then we add the color that we want. Sometimes I don't even do that. Sometimes, sometimes I just shoot straight from the camera sensor because maybe time won't allow, or maybe because I like the way it looks, whatever the case might be, but color is important. The other thing that caught my attention was, I did mention the LiDAR sensor. That caught my attention to some degree, but now incorporating that into computational photography, that's huge because now it gives you more control over what you're gonna be capturing because now the camera is sensing more than just um, contrast, like the separation between a white wall, and maybe my, my dark blue sweater, or a white wall and a pink object, something that's similar in color to that wall. Cameras will see that, but now they're seeing depth and dimensions and it, it's spatial, it's, it's, it's being able to be spatially aware. And the fact that you can, re, you can edit because of the processor on these phones, you can edit the 10 bit files natively, it's huge. And granted, Apple's using their own algorithm, their own format, their own codec, so to speak, to capture this content with the camera, but still to be able to do that from your pocket, because normally to edit 10 bit videos, you needed a powerful machine, you need a lot of um, hard drive space, you need a lot of uh, resources in, in order to do so. But now with this, processor and the setup that Apple has given you, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, so computational photography is something I'm, I'm really curious about and I'm, I'm interested in it because I know it's the future and we're here now, but it's going to be continuing to advance in the coming years, the coming months. The last thing I want to talk about is um, not the Dolby, Dolby Vision that I mentioned, that was mentioned too. But I want to talk about the fact that <laughs> the these two phones are specifically catered towards professionals. And I think a lot of people miss that. Not that the average person can't buy the phone or shouldn't buy the phone, but it's just that Apple sees that, hey, this is this is our market. This is what we want to focus on. These are people who want um, clarity. They want details. They want quality and they're willing to pay for it. And that tells me that the transition between from the phone to the iPad to the Mac is becoming, the, 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 the lines of demarcations are becoming more and more blurred. Not that a phone is, is equivalent to a Mac, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is it will be very, it's very easy for me to see now that Final Cut 10 can run on the iPhone 12 and beyond. Very easy, because if it's handling 10-bit video coming from a phone, obviously the phone files are different. I can see the handling other DSLR files, other even high-end files on that device. Apps with apps like Filmic Pro, LumaFusion, I'm like, 
I can literally grade, edit, export to YouTube straight from my iPad or even my phone. It's not the fact that I would want to do that or I need to do that or I should do that, but there have been times where I have to edit something right then and there and to not have to go set up, set up the machine, get things plugged in, copy the files, um, and just label everything as I should. I'm able to just drop a file on my phone through AirDrop, whatever the case might be. It's coming from a, um, a USB drive into the phone or into the iPad. And I'm able to edit it or take out most of the fat and basically have it prepared. It's it's just it's just not just a convenience. It's 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 a blessing. It's great because sometimes you want to see some a particular look or you want to show somebody a particular look or you want to hear the sound being exported to a screen or being exported to another phone or another device and you can do it right then and there with a tablet or a phone and so we can see that the lines are blurring more and more and the fact that this <laughs> the gpu is doing machine learning there's a there's a, a newell engine just for machine learning and, and these things have been around but they're becoming more and more advanced um, the processors are more advanced now and the body of the phone has changed, but like I said yesterday, it's not a significant, dramatic change. The screen has gotten bigger. Um, they've gone back to the the flat edges, not the round edges. That's that was on the um, iPhone XS, and I believe the 11 too. And they didn't mention anything about battery life, but those changes, those physical changes, are enough for someone who has an iPhone XS, a 10. Um, and definitely an eight if if they're gonna need to, to upgrade even the iPhone 12 is amazing because it has a similar processor um, And similar functionality it's just that it doesn't have all the hardware components. That's it But the iPhone 12 was a good buy even the mini iPhone that they, they announced as well So I my impression of these devices. It's amazing um, If you have the money if you need to update go ahead and do so it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a requirement, but if you need to upgrade because you have issues with your phone or your phone's on its last leg or you need to do a specific type of work with that device and you can you can offset the cost through some of your projects, then do so. It's, it's, it's a good investment. And I believe the, the stabilization has gotten better in these phones. Now, they did not include, at least not yet, maybe in a software update, they did not include portrait mode for video but the, the photography and the low light has improved. And now the, the images are, you're able to capture images in camera, in, in, in raw, like in, in Apple raw, that's what they call it. And that, that's pretty amazing too, because you already get amazing pictures with JPEG from the Apple, from the iPhone. You can even get raw files when you use a program like um, Halide. But to be able to do that now natively in the, in the phone and be able to access all that information, amazing. So I would recommend it guys, again, based on your needs and based on your situation. So yeah, those are my first impressions about the iPhone 12 and the 12 Pro. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Um, is it still the same old Apple to you guys? It's because everything looks the same, the, the icons, the colors, what? Let me know what you think. And remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content that you've heard today. Until next time, guys, this is Sewell. Peace.